Hello, this is Denise from Women Beyond a Certain Age. So our guest today is Pamela Rand. Hello, Pamela. How are you, Denise? Thank you for having me on. I'm good. It's our pleasure. Now, I have to tell you, I don't know how to even describe you, Pam, exactly, except you told me I could call you Pam the Ham, and I think that's the cutest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Pamela is an actor. Um, she has been a comedy comedian. She's been in film and theater. She's now, to me, Pam, I'm going to describe you as an inspirational motivator and a sketch comedy performer. People won't see you except for the pictures that we put up on when we broadcast the podcast. But I need them to know that you are 80 years young. I have to admit I'm 80 plus. <laughs> Oh, okay. it's the same, well, right? You, plus one, I, I, 80 plus one. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay. It doesn't seem possible to me because seriously, you know, there's a lot of information on people's websites and either it's done where people can really uh, get a feel for you or it's just gibberish to me. Do you know what I mean? That's what I think about. I mean, and I had a website and I still do because I was selling me. Do you know what I mean? I wanted people to hire me. So- but my website, we tried to keep it honest and open because otherwise people would be too shocked when they met me. And But I have to tell you, your website hits the mark. Mm -hmm. I want to tell people that it's Pamela Rand, R-A-N-D, dot net right now, and we'll repeat that. So here's why I wanted Pamela to be on today. The topic we'll start with is health is a laughing matter. Proven to impact our overall health. And you're talking about laughing. And I love to, I mean, I I love to laugh. I laugh at inappropriate things. I laugh at inappropriate moments. So tell us, yeah. so tell us how you came to you this. You can already please. say what I am going to say. <laughs> you already do it. No, no, no. <laughs> so I, I, um, I mean, laugh to live is a, my big motto. Um, I feel mm -hmm. that, um, first of all, laughter, it, it's a rather serious matter. I mean, laughter is important for our health, our emotional health, our stress level, our physical health, and uh, it, it's a liberation to laugh. So the fact that you laugh inappropriately, it's great. You're already there. Because <laughs> I, I, I encourage people to laugh more or you know that children laugh 400 times a day and we laugh maybe wow. 17 as adults. It's pretty pathetic, isn't it? <laughs> we lose that is it. That's pathetic. Mm -hmm. And you, we lose it. And you know what else, Pamela? All I know is, is when I get a really good laugh, do you know what I mean? It's like, what, which is why when I watch TV, I want to watch something that makes oh, me laugh. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Because I, and it, you, you just said it. Because as an adult, and especially different times in our lives with stress or money or politics or marriages or kids or whatever we've got, we for, we don't get to laugh enough. Because other emotions take over and we've, so, so for me, uh, finding the absurd in things, you kind of gear your brain to that. So it's like you're going through your day and you imagine certain things that, oh, what if, or, oh, that's, look at that lady, if she did that, and then it, you don't have to, you know, it's not a big guffaw, but it makes you chuckle or laugh <laughs> or, or, and and it makes you feel better. It gets you out of uh, the doldrums or the, the bad mood. Sure. Laughter can, it, it, the, physiologically, it's important that we laugh. And I think that people need to be aware of that. I think each individual should find uh, what makes them laugh, like you do. What what makes me laugh and actually do a little, maybe keep a diary or a, a little journal. Why I laugh today. How many times did I laugh today? But you have to know what makes you laugh. What makes me laugh? That is a great Way to say it. I, yes, and a lot of it is absurd. Okay. I also, Pamela, I know for me, one of the reasons I married second husband, who have been married for 33 years, 
is because my husband makes me laugh. And one of the things that make, makes me laugh the most is when he makes fun of me. <laughs> and it's not because, you know, it's not, it's not mean. He just will kind of do an imitation of me sometimes, which is so right on that I can't <laughs> help but laugh because it's absurd. That's great. So I have, uh, do, you know, do you know what a husband is? That must be very, no. yeah, I live in Marin. So yeah, I have a husband. A oh. husband is, <laughs> it sounds like a husband. A husband. <laughs> it's your husband, but you don't, you're not really together. I have a husband. Say that. Is that a that. great word? They don't have one for a, yes. they don't have one for a woman, but it's good for a man, right? <laughs> my husband. Yeah. So my husband and I, uh, uh, that's, that's what we have left. Laughter. I mean, he's he well, he's funny because he's he's from Bulgaria, so he has an accent and he says some very funny things, you know, with his accent. I can't understand what he's yes. And uh when he's just very we laugh. And the my, our kids say, Wow, you you two laugh a lot. <laughs> so isn't it wonderful that we can laugh? That's a wonderful thing. How wonderful. Now, Pam, I didn't know you lived in Marin. I grew up in Marin. Did you say I thought you grew I, up in, yes, you did, because I heard you say. Well, I was okay, born in like San me. Francisco. And yes, and then we in San Francisco lived a short time in okay. Brisbane. And then we moved to Marin because my father had grocery stores in Marin um, and a small chain of grocery stores. And we lived, and then he bought a real estate brokerage. So we lived everywhere oh, in Marin because we were always buying the new model home. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, he, and I, mean, so I, I grew, as I always say to people, I grew up in model homes. And uh, so isn't that funny? Now, where do you live in Marin? If of you don't mind I'm me asking. I live in Novato. <laughs> Novato. Oh, for God's sakes. I was just no, in Novato. <laughs> yes. That's funny. At, we lived in everywhere, Mill Valley. We lived in San Rafael for a long time. We lived in, oh, uh, out, out Atherton Road. And then both my sisters, my parents are gone. Both my sisters now live in Novato. But my father had a real estate office there for many years. So we, yeah, we mm -hmm. lived in Novato. And it's a beautiful, and my niece is still, one of my nieces still lives in Novato. It's a wonderful Thank little you. I town. raised uh, the children here. They all went to Samarin High School. That's probably <laughs> where your sisters have sent their children. Yes, all the world. exactly. Yeah. It's a great, that's great little town for raising children. Um, that's I've spent exactly maybe right. 38 years. But I'm from I'm I was born and raised in San Francisco and I went to school in San Francisco and then I went to France in the 60s and I lived there for seven years. I was I was there riding on the streets in 1968. <laughs> and um I went to a theater school. I went to a wonderful school called the International School of Movement, Mime, uh, and Theater, Jacques Lecoq. It's quite well known in a certain world. And that's where I learned the clown within. And I love the, that. And that's what I, well, I taught many years ago, the clown within, but that stayed with me. And that's really when I, when I laugh or when I do my comedy, when I do these absurd physical comedy sketches, which are on, by the way, my website, my YouTube is Adventures in Feeling Young, Adventures in Feeling Young. So I have like 30 plus uh, sketches from one to three minutes. The physical comedy, because that's what I was trained in. And somebody said, well, how can you be climbing over those shopping carts when you're 80? And I <laughs> said, well, who's counting? That's, that's my answer. Who's counting, right? I I watch them. I watch the oh, ones on your website. Oh. Now that I know that, yes. Now that I know that you have a YouTube channel, oh, I will go to you. your YouTube lot. channel. Now, oh. You know what it meant? First of all, it put me in a oh, good mood. Geez, You're great. absolutely right. But but you know what, Pamela, I kept thinking about? I thought, this is Charlie Chaplin. This is a female oh, Charlie wow. Chaplin. And it was just, it was wonderful to watch. And, oh, I'm so glad you explained that to me. I was just enjoying it without knowing you'd gone to school. Um, anyway. They're wonderful. And so now how do you, this is something, because you've talked about that laughter helps your immune yes. system. 
I, I know it improves my mood. I mean, there's just no doubt for me. It, it does decrease stress. Cindy and I worked together, Pamela, for like 25 years. And we worked in television. We worked in photography studios. Everything was hurry up to rush. Everything was $10,000 a second. Do you know what I mean? It was, yes. you know, from it's stress, stress, stress. Well, the only thing that saved us is we would find something hysterical. Do you know what I mean? Whatever it was. Sometimes we were making fun of the talent if they were really <laughs> difficult. Sometimes we were making fun of the food, whatever. Sometimes we just, sometimes we were making fun of each other. Whatever we found that would make us laugh, all of a sudden cut all the stress in our project and in the room and there we could go. have fun. I wish everybody would do that, but they don't. They give in to their moods or depressed. It's hard, you know, life is not easy. Not easy. No, so, it's not. So for, for you and for me and for Cindy, one of the solutions is, is to laugh. Uh, do you remember Norman Norman Cousins? Mm -hmm. in the, uh, uh, he was a political journalist. He wrote a book called The Anatomy of an Illness. So he had a very oh. debilitating uh, condition. Um, and the doc, he had to take like 25 aspirins a day with some kind of horrible arthritic condition. And he said, the hell with this. I'm not taking, uh, he stopped all his medications except for vitamin C. And he would watch two, he would watch the Marx Brothers, Charlie Chaplin, uh, all of the funny movies, movies that made him laugh. And he said that, yes. uh, 20 minutes of that, of watching those movies, of laughing, huge guffaws uh, would give him two hours of sleep. Isn't that fabulous? And then he'd stop and then, he'd, and then he'd wake up again and then watch more movies and he'd laugh and laugh. And it's physiologically, it's very interesting because he wrote, he was at UCLA also, they have a Norman Cousins or they did uh, a, department and it was not a department of laughter but it was the physiological uh effects of laughter on the immune system isn't that amazing amazing yeah. so it it doesn't surprise me because just and this is i also pamela for me years of therapy but i'll tell you the reason is that I, I know this, if you, it's like saying to go and watch 20 minutes and then having two hours. When I've been depressed in my life, I learned early that I had to put one of the tricks that I learned for myself. Uh, and it came from my therapist who said, do a mood chart. Do you know what I mean? You wake up in the morning and are you down? Are you up? How do you feel? And you can track, you don't have to do it for long because you start to see your own patterns. But what I learned was that if I would put a time limit on it, I'd say, okay, I am depressed about this. Do you know what I mean? Or, and, it, and of course you can't avoid it. I mean, sometimes we're depressed. People die, horrible things happen to yeah. us. Do you know what I mean? If you weren't depressed, you wouldn't that's be right, normal. That's right. But you, you know, can't let I it mean, consume I, you. You can't I, let it consume you. Exactly. And, and your tip about laughing more and finding the inner clown i love that think of me thinking of an inner clown um but i know this i put a time limit on it i i would say to myself when i was younger you have every right to be upset this is horrible this is unfair whatever it was yeah, do you know yeah. what i mean and then i think but you only have an hour today denise to think <laughs> that way the right after you know at 11 a.m you got to have a new attitude and you got to find something else to That's think about because <laughs> Yeah. It helped yeah. me. It helped me. I just, you know, if you stay down too long, of course, it's harder it to get back is. up. Yes. So as far as uh, your inner clown, how do you find it? So many people are embarrassed to show the silly side of themselves, right? You're not, obviously. Yes. <laughs> well, I know. And but I why? Be, Don't but... shit on yourself. That's the worst. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why that is, but I think because in my family, I, Pam, I was the youngest and I found that my job was to make everybody laugh. 
So when things got real tense or my father or my mother, they didn't fight a lot, but when they fought, but when, because I had two older sisters, I was the baby. When they were fighting with each other, if I made them laugh, they stopped fighting. We're so similar in many ways. <laughs> I, th I thought that when I read your so website yesterday. As a young yesterday. child, I lost my mother when I was not even like five and a half. She passed. And then my brother oh. passed a few years later. But, but I, I, you know, it's more recent. I haven't really delved into that until recently oh. where I realized, um, well, I knew that I, I could make people laugh. And that, that built resiliency in me. I make them laugh by doing silly things, songs or doing accents or singing or dancing. And uh, I had an uncle who who owned uh, the Rionito up in Russian River. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, the Harrises, that's funny the name. Uh, and, and so they would have me up there and I would do a whole sh little show. People would laugh. This was at six and seven years old. So that, that made me feel good. It made people laugh and I continued that. And I realized that I built resiliency because of that. This is the perfect lead in because what I also wanted you to tell us about, Pamela, is resilience is the most important thing. And as, as we age, I think it's harder to hang on to resilience sometimes. So when I read this on your website, I was so impressed. You know, when I was younger, I had someone was saying this recently. They said, oh, I was just fearless. and it never bothered me and it never got me down. And as they said it, I thought, well, I was like that too when I was younger. But as you age, and I'm not using age in a negative, but we do age for God's sakes. We're not, you we know, have we're, the, we have those we birthdays age. that come around. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. So, but I know this, I've always been very resilient, but as I've gotten older, I have to work on it. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't come naturally to me like it used to. That's true. That's true. I work on it too. I, people say, "How do you? How do you? How come you're this age and like this?" I, I work at it. So for yes. me, I um, I kind of got this image. Well, the body's like a car. It is. You have to oil it. You put water in it. You have to make sure there's air in the tires. You, the that's how we are. We have to keep it. Keep ourselves up. And that's I, it. So you're, you're talking about replenishing. replenishing, nurturing, nurturing, right? And so things that I do yes. or I've discovered. So I do go to I do go to a, a health club. I kind of need to go. I mean, sure. Sometimes I don't want to get off my chair, but I do it anyway because I I feel good. I feel better. I do senior weightlifting uh, once a week. Uh, I do a lot of Pilates and. Uh, water aerobics, yoga, and all that. Okay, I do that because some people will say, "Oh no, I can't do that. I hate that." Find other things. Uh, so that keeps yes. me physically going, and pro it probably emotionally too. Uh, the feel good. Actually, the weightlifting started because when, when I was around seventy five, I felt that I was losing muscle mass and getting more fragile, and just lifting, uh, you know, yes. five pounds in this class. Uh, it makes a difference. Isn't it amazing? It makes a difference. It's amazing. And now you make me, Cindy was just talking about that she's been doing some weight lifting. Now you've inspired me, girls. I started Pilates one year Wonderful. ago. I had, I'm a walker and I swim a little bit. I bought a bicycle because when I retired a few years ago and I am have not gotten on that bicycle more than twice, but I keep telling myself, but you know what? You've inspired me. I started Pilates a year ago. And you know what, Pam? It has changed my life. It's changed how I feel about myself. And it makes me feel strong. strong. And you build core strength. Core strength. Yes. So you do, you go you it, every week, you do go? I go every okay. Friday morning. I've been thinking about starting every other week, a second, yeah, good, second good. day. It's, now I have to tell you, I'll bore you for one minute. I've always been a walker, Pam. I mean, I walk, walk. I, I, I used to walk, I can walk five, six miles a day. And when I worked, lived at the beach or, um, and I still, I walked 
two big hundred pound dogs and I walk several. Yeah. I walk okay. a lot of steps. I try to get at least 10,000 in every day, if not 12 or 13. But recently I was in Europe. And a long story short, I was in Budapest. And Pest is the side of the city that there's not, it's so gorgeous, the whole, but there were no cabs. Okay. I couldn't get a cab. I'd go on to the Jewish Memorial Museum and there wasn't a cab in sight. So I don't know where I am, but of course, thank God I have the app on my phone. But this was the part. So at first, I looked down and I was feeling so sorry for myself. I mean, for the first moment, there was panic. And I thought, what? I come here and not get a cab, you know, because I was staying way up in Buda. Right. And you can't say anything in Hungarian because it's so complicated. <laughs> oh, I have to be there. Talk about, I mean, I'm... I thank God no one saw me because in the, I mean, no one could see it out inside me because inside I was like panicked and I'm not usually, I mean, I'm not a scaredy cat kind of person to make the long story short. I go into a coffee shop and I think, get a coffee, sit down, get, get it together, Denise. Okay. But this was the best part. When I looked then I put my hotel in and I, of course, it's all in Hungarian, but I thought I can do it. It's left, it's right. Come on, I'm not. I'm not an idiot. It said three point seven miles, and I thought, I'm scared about. I walk five miles all the time, so I walked my way out of Pest <laughs> with all the street signs in yes. Hungarian. <laughs> and then I got to the bridge, and I knew the yeah. river, oh, and okay. I could see my hotel. So all. You know, but I have to tell you, that gave me, I've been in some sticky wickets before in my life, but I thought to myself, oh, Denise, you've still got it. <laughs> that's your resilience. <laughs> you, that's it. I thought, damn it, you didn't have to be afraid. And it was very fun. Oh, good, yeah. I mean, I was, so, I was at the initial few minutes of absolutely horror that I couldn't get a cab. Once I th saw it, thought it through and saw how far it was. I thought I can do this. And it, it made me, it made me feel really good about my strength that I've been working on with Pilates. And just as you said, I love that example of thinking of a car. You in fact have to do maintenance and you have to, you have move, to move forward. forward. So other things that I find that help me in my own resilience, which I like to call a, uh, equanimity, familiar with that word, balance. I always, yes, I've told my kids, you know, steady your ship and keep moving forward. So, I, but I do things. I mean, I, I'm a, I've meditated. I counted up like 51 years of meditation. That's that's, that's twice fantastic. a day. So without meditating, uh, it's a, it's a positive addiction. So I think positive addiction are important, um, and. I really don't function well if I don't meditate, okay? Um, and then uh, I discovered about 15 years ago, Qigong. Have you, are you familiar with Qigong? No. Oh, Qigong is wonderful. No. It, it's a, it's like Tai Chi, but I would say Qigong is the trunk and Tai Chi is the branch. Okay. So it's, a, it, it's, it's, okay. it's, um, it's more free flowing in the sense you don't have to do 20 moves. Qigong okay. is, uh, it helps you uh, balance yourself. It's it's a slow, it's a moving meditation is what it is. So there's, you know, on yoga, you stretch and yoga, you want to stretch as much yes. as you can, which is great for flexibility. In Qigong, everything is round. It's more round. Qi meaning energy. So oh, Qigong sure. Application, your application of energy. So you are bringing energy in uh and it gives you a lot of strength in these movements you're harnessing the chi you're harnessing energy there are a lot of i'll send you that. a couple of uh, links if you want to try it so I it's for that. health and longevity so when i learning I, there's one guy called his name is lee holden he's in santa cruz as a center and he learned from a 106 year old chinese woman these this particular movements I mean, what the heck? I'm saying, I want to do that when I'm 106. So I started Absolutely. like 15 years ago. And I must say it's it's another positive addiction, but it's a feel good. You really feel different 
You, if you're tired, you do some Qigong specific movements, you get a whole boost, a, a whole feeling of energy. So why wouldn't you do that or something similar, right? Uh, in, I do yoga, correct. sorry. I know. I don't do that. I do less yeah, yoga. No. Now I do more Pilates. I, I get it. I, I, I've done yoga. I'm not as good at yoga. I like, I guess what I like about Pilates is someone's telling me what to do forcibly and I have the reformer. Oh, oh you have the reformer. Oh, I've been doing mat Pilates oh, yes. in the last couple of years. Okay. But I did reformer b before. Good for you for getting on that reformer. Oh yeah. I love, I love yeah. that machine. So it, I think, uh, ways to find resilience in your, but you, I mean, you already know these formulas. It's, You've had some wonderful therapies and teachers along the way. Therapy. Yeah, but but really, who, that's giving you really good tools, right, to manage your life. See, this is when I read your website yesterday, Pam. I thought to myself, these are tools, but these are just excellent tools, okay? And and you're using them. And this is the difference. And I just say this to people. I think we're all, we all have to get tools given to us at, at different points in our life, whether it's from a teacher, whether it's from the, a master, whether it's what we read, whether how, whatever we do, but we don't always put them to good use because that that's hard, hard work. work. It takes self-discipline. and That's a big yes. thing, self-discipline. And I'm not going to point the fingers at anybody, but I, I am self-disciplined. I mean, I don't overindulge when I eat because why? I don't feel good. I don't feel good after. So why would I do that to myself? There you go. Uh, so yes. I, I do have, it does take self-discipline to maintain in your 70s, 80s, 90s and beyond. Um, some people won't agree. I mean, there are people who can... You know, you you see them. Uh, they're ninety five, and they drink their schnapps every day, and they so God bless them. But I find myself, I really need the self discipline to to keep my equanimity, to keep to keep moving forward. I I think, but really, the point you're making is is we each need to find that in ourselves. Yes. Do you know what I mean? And I know for me, I totally agree with you. I. I am at my best when I take my walk every day. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I walk for a long time. I walk my dogs. I like my house neat. I like to do some writing. I like, you know what I mean? I drink tons of water. I mean, there's just certain things that I know that are, I love, what would, what do you call them? Addictions. Oh, positive, positive addictions. Yes. I, I, That's brilliant. Um, it's a choice. I guess it's really a choice. A person has to decide. Yes. This is what I want to do. But people are influenced. I mean, look, when we get to be 70, yes. 80 or 70s or 80s, 90s, uh, society expects us to be a certain way. There's a, there's an image. You have to look this way. Uh, so that's the yes. ageism, which, of course, I'm always fighting against. Uh, I know. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we're fighting against ageism. And why should I look that way? Okay. But I don't. Um, so I become a role model for 30 year olds. <laughs> it's very funny to me. I think that's fabulous. Ageism. To me, it sneaks up on you and in the funniest ways. But for me, I was in my 60s. I'm working. I worked as I could. Cindy and I could work circles around 27 year old boys that we I hired. OK, yes. I mean, we had experience and energy and. Um, I used to say to her, it might take us a day or two to recover, but you know, what we've done in the past 10 days on a photo shoot, if we were in charge of, you know, photographing an entire photographing and styling and cooking all the food for, you know, a 400 page Amazing. cookbook, I said, find, find someone else who could have done that. Do you know what I mean? But the recovery time definitely, um, took a little longer but I started seeing it in my 50s with my clients as my clients got younger oh okay yeah okay, which happened oh and then in my 60s when my clients started to retire so these are people that had been in charge of food boards or publicity or publishers for you know 30 years as they started to retire the kids that replaced them started saying to me things like well when are you going to retire 
And I thought, and, and most of them I'd say, well, not yet, you know what I mean? Or, uh, but I, I realized that to them, I looked really Yes, that's, old. don't we? Yes. <laughs> and, and even though they loved the results that they got from Cindy and I and my business and my uh, and the other people that helped us and stuff, they thought we yes, were old. Yes, that, that was really crappy. <laughs> when that I know. It just, yeah. it is what right. it is. Do you know what I mean? But I, I thought to myself, okay, well, they were 27. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of them were 26, 27, 28. And what the things you were saying... They would, they would stay out all night long. And then in the morning when they would come to their jobs where they're in charge of something, the nicest thing that would happen, and this is so, they were so hungover, Pam, that they would just fall asleep <laughs> on the couch. And I'd think, oh, how wonderful. Do you know what I mean? Because their boss wasn't there. So I would say to them, oh, honey, you should take a little nap. Don't worry about it. It's our secret. And then they leave us alone and we could get the work done. But they, I, I think to myself, oh, do I do remember those days when I went to work so hungover in my 20s that I could barely breathe. I wish I'd had someone like me that said go to sleep. <laughs> you wish you had. Speaking of which, so I, uh, I had children late in life. Um, okay. Which, which was a choice. My first daughter was born when I was 42 the, and uh, she's the uh, eldest. And then uh, my husband, my now husband, <laughs> decided we, <laughs> we can't just have an only child. So I uh, gave birth to my twins at, at 51. I did use uh, oh my God. IVF. Oh my God. If IVF is going to be outlawed, <laughs> we used IVF yeah. and I have two wonderful daughters. So our with three daughters uh and the twins are 30 and my twins are 30 so oh. they I never told them my age for years and years I waited till they were 21 because already I mean I was a youthful older mom I understand uh, and I was funny and great personality and um they would love me to be and I was liberal I would pretty much let them do most things on yes. a long leash uh so um, yes and plus kids are cruel. So I didn't want to, we didn't want to tell them our exact ages um, until later. And it all worked out. They're so happy to say, oh, my mom's 81 now. They like to say that. So it's so funny, isn't it? It's wonderful. No, you're a role model. But you have to have a, a lot of energy. I mean, I think it's wonderful to have children late. So people would say to me, I have these little teeny toddlers next to me. And they would go, oh, are those your grandchildren? And I would go, oh, well, yeah. they're grandchildren, but they're mine. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like your faces drop. Really? <laughs> and of course, I was very pregnant with these twins. I'm very short. I'm like five feet. So. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> So anyway, that was quite an adventure. Uh, that was an adventure in feeling young. <laughs> and I'm sure, and I'm just guessing this, and I, but I'm sure some people said to you, you're too old to have twins, or you're too yes. old to have oh, your yes, children. Oh, yes, of course, now. or they thought it. I remember uh, being, uh, yes. uh, so I went to see the doctor, and he said, uh, Pamela, I I, I got to tell you, um, you're going to, I'm sorry to say you're going to be having twins. And I said, well, Twins I can handle. If you tell me I'm having triplets, I'll croak right here on the table. <laughs> she had beautiful, beautiful uh, daughters. Um, there we go. So that's another, yeah, another. So I was going to go back to uh, how can people develop and bring out laughter? Please. I think, uh, I think you need some, um, they need tips or they need to help themselves. I mean, put, put a post-its all in your bathroom, laugh. Uh, another thing that's very easy, you wake up in the morning, I found, if you smile, if the first thing you do is smile, before you look at your phone, before you do your prayers of gratitude, or whatever you do in the morning, just smile. But not a big hat, but... I so agree. It makes you feel better. It makes you feel better for the whole day. I agree. Pam, I can't thank you enough for your time today because I know you have other commitments today. We snuck you yes, in. Yes. I so appreciate it. So I want to say it's Pamela Rand, R-A-N-D, dot net was your website. 
Now tell us again your YouTube channel. The YouTube channel, which is also a website, but the YouTube channel is Adventures okay. in Feeling Young. And there are that. many sketches. There's also uh, the, what they call those reels that you can, that are shorter yes. of me and uh, colleagues. Uh, even a, I have a young girl now who's done some sketches with me. Um, and I'm with my wig and I'm gr grandma or granny. I love it. Now I have to, I did, wanted to ask you one thing about your sketches because I watched them and now I'm going to watch Thank more you. of them. You're you're the director and everything, aren't you? I produce and direct them, yes. <laughs> but I have a crew. I have a cameraman and I have, you know, a crew. We write them up. That's what I thought. I love it. But I knew, I thought these are all coming from her. Thank you, yes. I, I Hopefully one day I'll have a show. I mean, who knows, you know? Why not? That's what I want to do. So uh, I'm writing a sitcom. I'm in a sitcom comedy class. That's a, a That's quite challenging, but I have a... A lot of ideas. And I have role models. Carol Burnett's a role model. Shirley MacLaine. By the way, I'm born on the same day as Shirley oh, MacLaine. I love that. She's, what, 91, 93 now, something like that. She's doing, she's filming. And Jean Smart in Hacks, which is one of the best shows on television. And she's in, oh. she's in her 70s. I think Hacks is on HBO. I'm not look sure. It. Look at it. Yeah. H A C K S. She stars. She's the starring role, and she's in her seventies, and she's won an Emmy for it already. It's a what? Oh, that's great. The other young woman, who's Hannah, shoot, her last name. She's a comedian. She's Lorraine Newman's daughter. Oh, from yeah. So look at that. It's exactly your sort of. It's your venue. Oh, wonderful. Have you seen that film called Thelma? I haven't seen it yet. I've, I've heard about it. She's 94. She's 94. She's extraordinary. I know who she, I know the actress. I can't think of her name, but. Uh, Judy, Judy Smart. Yeah, extraordinary. Is it? The, the, I mean, we look up to those people. I look up to those people. I do too. Look up to me and then I look up to them, right? Everyone should. Yeah. Well, honey, thank you so much. I want to thank Cindy, who keeps the train thank on the track. Cindy. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I want to thank all our listeners. If you have any questions, they know. Pam, when we broadcast your podcast, all of your information is up there so that people can contact you. Thank you. If Oh, absolutely. And if people want to contact us, it's womenbeyond at iCloud.com. And Pam, I, I feel inspired just speaking to you. Thank you. And when you come to Novato, call me and I'm taking you to lunch or dinner, whatever. We can take each other to lunch. I'm in Novato pretty often with my sisters there. And also, yes, that would be lovely. That would Please. be just lovely. I'd love, yes, it would be wonderful. We'll have a good laugh. <laughs> we'll have a good laugh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And take care. And everyone go to her website. I'm telling you, PamelaRand.net. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Bye. Thank you, Denise. Take care. Big hugs. Big hugs.